everyone and welcome to Chosen. Greetings and welcome. Um, each week we review, we review portions of the True Family Values, which is biblical based and focuses on five major areas of kingdom building, particularly on rebuilding the family, restoring the community, and renewing the nation and the world. Tonight we will hear part one of Ideal Marriage and Family from Dr. Tanya Edwards. So please grab your Bibles, Divine Principles, and notepads if needed. To begin our program, we will have Bishop Rosamond Trotman from Higher Rock Life's Partnering Outreach in New Jersey to lead us into reflective moment to cry out for God's, for God's presence in our land and for an opening prayer. Uh, Bishop Rosamond Trotman. Hey, I'm here. Thank you, Bishop. Hello, everyone. Good night. Hello. And I'm here to read Psalm 8 to 5 as a reflective moment to cry out to God's presence in our land. I'm going to read from Psalm 8 to 5, 1 to 7, and 9 to 13. Sharing this with you all. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me. I'm sorry. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself, your wrath indignation. Restore us then, O Lord, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity to our land and will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and peace shall be a path for his feet. That was a prayer for the land, asking God to show his presence and to increase our land with favor. I turn now to a, an excerpt from Dr. Moon from his speech of October in 1990. Um, 1973, when he says, Christianity, he says that we must be humble. We must initiate from the moment, the most critical movement that could be possible. It is the movement of bringing God back home. All, all of your pride, your wealth, your cares, your cars, and your great cities are like dust without God. We must bring God back in our homes, in our churches, your schools, and your national life. Our work for God's purpose must begin. Let's bring God back and make God's presence in America a living reality. We must help the world to be a better place in which we live and not neglect our responsibilities as Americans. The great ideology of democracy should be used for the whole world, not only in America, but for all other land. I come now in prayer as we come together tonight, and I call all ye faithful, chosen, beloved, anointed, and appointed believers. We come together in supplication, petition, and prayers. And let us enter into the divine grace of well-being for our people, our country, and nation of the world to repair, rejuvenate, and restore families and kingdom building of love that God has set abroad in our hearts in this world, the world to come, and for all humankind services and missions. We await you, O Lord, for this redemption to come. Let us pray. O Spirit of the living God, you shine your light on us. Hear us, O heavenly parent, from our earthly abode. 
Imbue in us the power of your fire of your love. Grant us your compassion and divine strength for services of true family kingdom restoration building. Help us, O oh God, through the Holy Spirit to always remember your generosities, mercies in doing your will and not our ills. Grant that we may use our time to rebuild our bodies, renew our minds, strengthen and refresh our spirit to envision the goodness of your will and creation. Rise up, O oh Lord. Look upon the churn of the tombs, the wombs, mothers, fathers, our homes, families, countries, and nation, and grant them great inner peace and grace blessings of good health and well-being. Bless all those who carry our industry, carry on in our industries, our commerce, government elected officials, and nations, that they may be imbued within their hearts, your will to be a leading breakthrough force. To, yeah, a, a force of interfaith, reconciliation and fellowship. Through your mercies and love, living for the sake of others in our humankind services of missions and ministry. I pray and appeal that God's divine grace, power and Holy Spirit of truth be upon us in his blessedness through Christ Jesus. May the light of the Holy Spirit continue upon us, shining like a beacon from a lighthouse, giving guidance, hope, expectations, directions, rescue and refuge to all souls in these dark, tested and trial times, as we continue in our witnessing in truth and in spirit and living for the sake of others, of our neighbors and, our, and friends. These we pray in hope of our, of, our, of our salvation. Promises and promises of God, guidance, hope, expectation, and living for the sake of our neighbors and others. These we pray in hope and also in hope of eternal life through the firstborn from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, mm. my family, mm. parents, mother of peace and her family and all the families. Mm. I pray this in the name of Jesus, adieu. In light and love, in light and love, in light and love, adieu. Adieu. Thank you so very much, Bishop Trotman, for your beautiful prayer. We definitely feel God has and welcome to America and the world. So thank you so very much, Bishop Trotman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We will now invite Dr. Ki Hoon Kim to, to share his opening remarks. Dr. Kim is the chairman of the World Christian Leadership Conference and is also from the American Clergy Leadership Conference in Paredes. So Dr. Kim, please let us hear from you now. Uh, thank you, uh, Young Sun. Uh, thank you, Bishop uh, Trotman. Your prayer, your scripture reading, your father, mother, moon's uh, message readings. Thank you so much. Already, I have a full of spirit from heaven and each one of you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Rouse, uh, thank you so much. Uh, even you send out uh, one minute before uh, 6 p.m. all emails about the uh, announcement uh, tonight's uh, uh, children uh, webinar. So I am very impressed, Dr. Rouse, your leadership and all ACS system members and pastors. Uh, thank you and congratulations to uh, everyone, you are consistently having this uh, children uh, workshop every Monday, 6 p.m., uh, based on uh, Founders uh, True Family Value uh, Ministry. So I am so uh, grateful, and I will keep coming back every Monday. So please uh, let us know. And also, I really want to support each one of you and today's uh, a wonderful lecturer uh, on true family. 
And once again, thank you, ACLC. Uh, you are sponsoring over this uh, wonderful uh, chosen uh, webinar. Thank you, Young Sun. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Kim. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Kim. We're so honored by your presence here. So thank you so very much for coming. Mm -hmm. We will now hear from Reverend Joshua Holmes, the National Director of YCLC, who will update us on the Young Christian Leadership Conference. Reverend Holmes. Thank you, Minister Quinn. It's good to see everybody. Of course, I'm always honored. Uh, Dr. Kim, it's good to see you. Dr. Rouse, and thank you, Bishop Trotman, for your prayer. I always feel like uh, I'm unworthy to speak on this call. Sometimes I question, uh, what am I supposed to share? But somehow God always gives something uh, for YCLC to be able to showcase for you all. And I hope it may inspire you. Um, I believe in the power of young people. And I, I, as Dr. Rouse often says to me, is that if we're not passing on what we're doing to the youth, then we're dying or <laughs> something along those lines. Dr. Rouse, you're uh, constantly emphasizing the value of raising up, mentoring and guiding these young Christian leaders that are out there. And what we're seeing now across the nation is a increase, a drastic increase in baton passing. The first generation Christian pastors are out there. They're now passing their baton off to these young Christian leaders. So it becomes ever more imperative that we can reach them, we can touch them, and we can bring them into the fold of ACLC. And that is what YCLC is here to do as a project of ACLC. And so we are, what we are, seek to do is to partner with those individuals who are out there. You may be one of them or you may be connected to somebody. So I just wanna showcase some of what has happened in the last few days, um, and then even show a little bit of uh, uh, some sound here uh, in a moment. But um, this was at the Pastor Summit in Subregion 3, which is the Midwest Subregion. It's actually where Dr. Kim is at. This is a different location though, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, our brother, Pastor Hebanja Kasile, who just got engaged today, uh, he was engaged to Grace Kellett today, which is incredible. You know, in this movement, engagement means absolute. So uh, they're going to go receive the blessing as soon as they possibly can. I imagine I was there with my wife as well. Uh, but Pastor Ebangja gave a powerful message on YCLC while we were there. Um, there was also just an uh, incredible experience with Dr. Rouse being there, delivering the vision for ACLC to all the ministers. And um, many young individuals were there present. And I really appreciate that. One thing I found is as young people uh, partake in ACLC events, they discover the value of the blessing. They really discover the value of the blessing. It provides a context that they did not have before of ministers testifying to how the blessing has transformed their life. It's incredible. It really is. And of course, we had our young people singing and as well as testifying themselves. This is uh, Reverend Kevin, Minister Kevin and Shannon Bordeaux, who are a couple in the Missouri area. And uh, we hope that they're, they've been connected with YCLC for a while and uh, already and connected with us. And they received the blessing four years ago. It transformed their life. And he testified that day to the merit, to the merit of the foundation of those who sacrificed their life for us to receive the blessing is, and what you're going to hear tonight from Dr. Tanya is it didn't, it, you're blessed to even hear that content, the true family values content that somebody had to die. Somebody put their life on the line for you to be here tonight. That's what he was testifying to. And I believe as young people, when we learn to respect and honor our elders that way, that's really where heaven's blessing comes from. So this is exciting. I want to play a video of just a clip of Pastor Harry Bangja's message that he shared. Um, I'll optimize and then enjoy just a short video. God's heart, Father Moon was, was telling us in the speech this morning, is a heart that embraces the world. For God so loved the world. God's heart is a heart that wants to embrace the world. Okay, you have a beautiful church, nice programs, but 
That is not all the satisfaction that God needs. For as long as there is a brother, a sister who has not experienced the fullness of God's love, God is not satisfied. Yes. And so all of us need to be invested into reaching out to the love until the last person can experience the fullness of God's love. Amen. Amen. Um, that was just a clip of his video. That is a man preparing to get blessed one day. Woo! Uh, he was telling me that there were so many challenges. I don't know if he's on tonight, but he had so many challenges. He felt like that was all preparation for him to receive this engagement to his future wife. So God's uh, heart. Let me move on. Uh, we've also started a 43-day devotion in Dallas. This is their, their group there. Uh, just incredible young righteous leaders coming together and offering daily devotion and prayer together. That is powerful for the sake of the Dallas area. They are praying together every single day. There is maturity there. There's depth. There's relationship and growth and heart. And from there, I can't even imagine the kind of things God is going to do through the relationship and this kind of unity. Uh, incredible. Uh, and then we're also creating music videos with some of the ministers we're connected to. This is Dietra Cadden. This is the photo shoot. Uh, this is the music video shoot that they did with the CARP YCLC team over there in Los Angeles. So they are filming this whole music video studio and everything. Exciting. Um, you'll see it soon. We've also developed some other media. We, we made a, a song with Jermaine Wells in the Dallas area, also another dance with Dietrich. We want to work with you. We want to connect with the ministers you're connected to. There, as Dr. Rouse guides me in saying that we are want to meet your ministers, young ministers, where their gift is at, where their leadership skill is at. If they're a politician, then we can connect with them there. Trust me, we can. If they're in music, we want to get their their music out there. We want to work with you and we want to put it all together, package it, help them come together and in that kind of unity, build something incredible through the movement of YCLC and lead that all back into ACLC's work with the blessing. So if you want to connect with us, go to ycLC.info. You can click the join tab or you can follow us on Instagram at we.r.com. YCLC. Amen. Aju, hallelujah. I'm so excited for tonight's word from Dr. Tanya. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Reverend Holmes. That's so inspirational, so inspiring. And congratulations to the young man, uh, Reverend um, Hibangja, who will receive the blessing. And congratulations to YCLC and all the wonderful work you're doing. So thank you so much for that wonderful, inspirational message. Mm -hmm. All right, um, anytime during the presentation, if you have questions or comments that you would like answers to, please type them in the chat box and later we will try to address them at the end. So now we will hear part one of Ideal Marriage and Family from Dr. Tanya Edwards. Dr. Tanya Edwards is the Director of International Affairs for World Christian Leadership Conference and she has served on the Executive Committee for the American Clergy Leadership Conference and is a member of the 172 clergy who attended Reverend and Mrs. Moon in Korea. So please help me welcome up Reverend Dr. Tanya Edwards. Thank you, Young Soon. It's such a pleasure to be with you this evening. And I get so much joy um, being an officiator with my husband when I see the couples coming forward to receive their blessing. And just to see the smiles on their face, the gleam in their eye, it's just so rewarding and refreshing because I know that God's doing something in their marriage and will do something in their family. So I want to talk tonight. I'm going to just go slow. I'm going to do more of a teaching than a giving a sermon, but I want to talk to you about true family values ministry, biblically based divine principle seminar. Now, right here, these two words, family values, we don't see much of family values taught anymore because people just don't go there. They just don't uh, respect values. They don't attain to values. They don't 
maybe they've never been taught themselves, but it just seems like we've lost the values of families in the past several years. And I'm so glad because this family values ministry, where it's true family values ministry, was given by Dr. and Mrs. Um, uh, Reverend and Dr. Mrs. Sun Myung Moon. And I'm so thankful to them for bringing this to us, bringing this to the world, bringing this to the clergy, bringing this to families, because we want to make sure that before God, we are doing what we need to do to help inspire and give joy to God. Okay, let's get going. Next. Okay, I want to talk on session three, the ideal marriage and family. We all want to know what the ideal marriage and family is. And I think this could be wrapped up in quite a few sessions, but we're going to talk specifically in a specific area tonight. We see a picture here of Adam and Eve where God has placed them in the garden. Next. What was their responsibility? When God placed them in the garden, he surely just didn't put them there and say, go for it. He just put them in the garden, then he, he blessed them. But God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, but also have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, to me, this is found in Genesis 128, but to me, that is such a responsibility that Adam and Eve had to undertake. And it's also a blessing to them to have received this responsibility. And we, as families, as couples, have a responsibility also, a mandate from God, how and where and why and when to create our marriage and to create a family. Next. Now we're going to talk about the three great blessings. First blessing being fruitful. Second blessing multiplying. Third blessing to have dominion. Next. The second blessing, multiply. God had allowed the family to be one. He didn't just put Adam and Eve in the garden and said, this one is for your, your side, this side is yours. No, he put them together in the garden. He put them in there to mature. So when you have a mature man and a mature woman, and you can't come up with a harmonious family, then they can be ready for society, the nation, and the world. Scripture in Deuteronomy 7.13 says, And he will love thee, and he will bless thee, and he will multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the next slide. Thou, wow, what a beautiful family. This is the fruit of the womb of the woman to produce children so that you can have a family under God. You have a happy husband here, a happy wife and two happy children. And you can just see the love of God and their faces. Okay, why do we marry? Well, I want you to just ask yourself that question. Why did I get married? Or why do we marry? What is the purpose? What is the reason? There has to be a purpose for why we marry. And I remember when I was very young, uh, a few years ago, uh, when I was in high school, all we wanted to do as young girls was to get married. That seemed to be the thing that we did on a, on a, you know, when you were young, we couldn't wait to get married, maybe to leave home, maybe to just have a, a friend in marriage, maybe to just 
have a mate that you can be with all the time. But we wanted to get married as young as possible. And I got married very young. And um, we marriages were always seemed to be like they were always in June. And we all had our desires and our own hopes and ways that we wanted to do it. And we were looking at each other and weddings that had just transformed. And we wanted to be like the couple before us. Go next. Now you see here a very, very, very happy couple, especially the man. And I'm sure she's looking at him and saying, oh, wow, he's, he's so happy. He's just, he's just elated with happiness. He's just jumping for joy. And we're going to talk about joy in a minute, because when you get married and you become one, there is joy involved. There's excitement involved. And I'm so glad I wanted to present this picture to you because it's a happy occasion. Okay, there may be some few things down the road that we need help and, and um, help with. But when the beginning, just like Adam and Eve were put into the garden, I'm sure they were so elated and happy. And maybe Adam jumped just like this man. I don't know. But I know that they were in the garden and very happy to begin with. Next. We marry, and here's a few reasons why we marry, to become closer to God by perfecting love, to bring joy to God, to multiply God's true love, true life, and true lineage, and for building God's kingdom. We marry to become closer to God by perfecting love. There's a scripture that says, Love casteth out all fear. You cannot have love and fear at the same time. When you get married, sure, there's a little bit of uh, fear in you, but the love overtakes any fear that you may have. And it says we're also to resemble God, God's image, which is man and woman. Genesis 1, 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he him, them. Now, God, as we know, is a spirit. Go back one. So if, we, if God is a spirit, how can we be created in his image? Well, the reason we are created in his image is because he wanted man and woman to come together to unite as one, that and show love, that is God's image. God's image is all about love and peace and joy and happiness. And this is what makes God happy. Next. In Matthew 19, four to six, the scripture says, and he answered and said to them, how we are to resemble God. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but they are one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not a man separate. Now we see here, that first of all, in Samuel, Samuel got, was married to his wife. His wife remained with her mother and her father. Then Samuel came and lived with her and they became one. And you also notice that at the end of this, where it says, therefore, what God has joined together, let not a man separate. That's in your wedding vows when the minister is performing your wedding. Those are in the vows. Next. When man and woman become one and as a couple unite with God in true love, perfection is attained. There can be no perfection without true love. Reverend Sun Myung Moon has stated this emphatically. 
There can be no perfection without true love. Next. The second blessing is that a perfected man and woman should become a true husband and true wife, have children and realize an ideal family, thus fulfilling their duty as true parents from Reverend Sun Myung Moon. We have to fulfill our duty. It's all, okay, next. It's all about love. Next. It's all about love. What is love? You hear that song, what's love got to do with it? Well, here we are. Love brings happiness, joy, peace, and harmony, doesn't it? You feel all those feelings when you get married, and hopefully you'll feel them the rest of your marriage. But in the beginning, you're going to feel all this. Now, love is making relationships with your spouse and with your family bringing perfection into the kingdom of God. Right. Next. What we do? Through experiencing joy and love, you share with your spouse under God's love and authority. You will embody God's true love. Our love is perfected through our spouse and our family. Do you know why God, we can share love with God? Because God gave us love. He gave us joy. Therefore, we can give God back the joy that he's so deserving of. And, that, and we know that we can give it back to him because he gave it to us first. And his love, we have to share it with our spouse. You, you, you have to share love. And the Bible, this, what we're reading here says, and authority. With the authority God has given to you under leading and directing and having a family, you will embody God's true love. Next. The second blessing is that a perfected man and woman should become a true husband and a true wife, have children and realize an ideal family thus fulfilling their duty as true parents. And this is by Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Next. Another reason why we marry, we bring joy to God. To return joy to God through the happiness and joy that the husband and wife share through the marriage and the family. And this is why I said that God gave us joy. Here we're saying to return joy to God. And God is, is pleased with the happiness and joy that you and your spouse share through your marriage and through your family. Because this is what he wanted in the first place in the garden. And we know that that was never fulfilled. So now he is expecting and de um, depending on us depending on you and I and our spouses and our families to return that joy and happiness to him. Next. We also marry to multiply God's true love, true life, and true lineage. The family is the cornerstone of the kingdom of heaven on earth, Reverend Sun Myung Moon. The family is the cornerstone. What's a cornerstone? Next. This is a building being built. They cannot build this building unless there is a cornerstone because the cornerstone is what comes together at the end of the building and it holds up the frame of the building. Without a cornerstone, a building cannot stand. A building has to be built with a cornerstone. Why am I saying this is because the family is the building. The family has to be the cornerstone and they are the cornerstone to hold up the family. Sometimes families get down and, and, and despondent and despaired, but with the strength of God and the love and being as a cornerstone, you can have the authority from God to keep that strong, to keep it built up. And under the anointing of God. Next. Then when it's all built, 
It's a beautiful structure of a building. Same as a family. You come together with your, with your spouse before you're married. Then you get like an engagement. Then you get married. Then you have children. And then you can say we're the cornerstone because we're the family. Now, after all that you set up in the beginning with your family, then people can look at you and say, wow. God can look at you and say, wow, what a beautiful family. What a building of God under the kingdom of heaven on earth. Next. The family is the school of love, Reverend Sung Myung Moon. Through the family, we can learn and experience parental love for children, children's love for parents, conjugal love, and brothers and sisters love. This completes the four realms of the heart, which we will talk about in one of our next sessions. Next. Another reason we marry for building God's kingdom. I love this part because to me, building the kingdom is what it's all about. Building God's kingdom. We find in the scriptures, Matthew 6, 31, it says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where, wherewithal shall we be clothed? Because Matthew 6.33 says, If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Why am I saying this? Because in Luke 17.21 it says, Neither shall they say, Lo, here is the kingdom, or lo, there is the kingdom. No, says, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It is within you. And Matthew 16, 19 says, and I will give unto these the, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Wow, what powerful, how God has given us so much power to go forward and to have the kingdom of heaven, not only within us, but now we have the keys to heaven. What are the keys to heaven? The kingdom of God. Now, I want you to just look at this for a moment. I know this is a kingdom uh, probably of depicting heaven in the sky, but I don't want you to look at it as that. I want you to look at this as your family because your family is the kingdom of God. Your family is, holds the keys to the kingdom. Your family is the cornerstone. Your family is what God is pleased with in his heart, with joy and love and peace. This is your kingdom. This is the kingdom of God right here on earth. This is the kingdom that is going to hold your family and hold it before God and say, this is my family. These, are, This is my spouse. This, These are my children. These are my grandchildren. And just as we have already talked about children and grandchildren, which we will talk about further down the road, uh, this is the kingdom of God. Where is it? Right here on earth. Who is it? Where is it? It's within you. And I want to see and know that you feel that you have the kingdom of God within you and within your family. Next. All things of creation and the universe will rejoice through the love and marriage of family. Next. Here's marriage rules. I thought I would just throw this in just for the sake of it. Respect one another, cherish each asset, listen carefully, if you can, be patient and kind, if you can, laugh together, cry together, I added that one in, forgive each other, be thankful, and research why, or remember, I'm sorry, remember why we fell in love in the first place. I want to thank you for your participation. I hope that you've gotten something or received something from tonight's lecture. 
I have more to come for the next two lectures. And I am so thrilled and I'm so happy to give it to you tonight. And it gets so much more involved with the kingdom and the family. And, you know, I, I don't think that people really, Christians really understand that the kingdom of heaven is right here on earth. And even though the scripture says the kingdom is within you. So I want to thank you again. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you for all those that had partaking in this meeting tonight. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so very much, Dr. Edwards, for your wonderful presentation. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now hear reflections and a closing prayer from Dr. Rouse, the national co-chairman of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. Dr. Rouse. Thank you, Minister Quinn. I want to thank all who have come to join us for Chosen tonight. It is one of the most important activities for us at this time in history. Why? I say this because America is witnessing Christianity in crisis. It is still happening here among us that we have so many who are in spiritual poverty. And because of this, it's carrying over into marriages and families. And God for soon, both or knew this and therefore called Father and Mother Moon to usher in a third phase of salvific work that's important. And we can follow this biblically and then into the divine principle when we notice that right from Genesis where they were led to lead us in this study and the fall took place with first man and woman. God chose a redemptive plan. And that redemptive plan was chosen to be through a chosen human race of people of God, the Jewish race. Interestingly enough, with their development of their faith, they were already a people that could usher in the work that God desired for all men and women and represent a collectiveness that God desires, but God really desires for us to be in a unity without misuse or abuse of all of this. That work with the first Israel is very important to know and to note, to help us understand our human responsibility today. And then with the second Israel came Jesus Christ, working very specifically for us to return to the fruitfulness as individuals that can help us be prepared for what God ultimately desires for us in our multiplication process, the building of men and women through our marriages and families that are in the obedience with God. And that did not become complete with the second Israel. That's why this third Israel redemptive plan has been brought to us. And Dr. Edwards was telling us today that we need to be properly prepared to enter into this marriage and family because it is significantly and seriously a part of God's redemption for all of the world. And Father and Mother Moon has brought to the attention of all people of faith and specifically to us in America, for America is the hope, the hope of the Christian foundation that will lead us to understand marriage and family in the redemptive nation, nature of its heartness, artistic desire for God, that our hearts be in alignment with God. Our hearts will be in alignment with one another. And we will take serious the vows that we make, not only heart to heart, man, to woman, 
but we are making a vow to God to return to God's desire for us to be in obedience. The American Clergy Leadership Conference, we are wanting you to join us in leading the way to the clergy blessing movement, returning all of God's children to the great three great blessings, God's original idea that starts the process of educating with chosen. And now that we have gone through it and reviewed it, and we've understood what went wrong and reviewed that too, I ask that you continue to invite everyone to join Dr. Edwards as she continues to bring us on these Monday nights, coming forward as she did tonight. Let's prepare to return to the original ideal that God has for us in this redemptive plan. We all can feel it. We hear it. We see it. We know it. America is in crisis. But know this as well. Through this work that God has brought to us, we can now have the blessed assurance and all of the hope to make within our community, not a Christianity that's in Christ, but a Christianity that brings peace. And in the bringing of that peace and prosperity for all in America, it gives hope to the world that ultimately the kingdom of God will be on earth so we can have a heavenly America, a heavenly career, a heavenly world. How about having heaven right in our home, our relationship? That's why we're here. Dr. Edwards, thank you from the depths of our hearts for bringing in the important significance of our being ready to be fully committed. Committed. Isn't it great too to see that Grace Kelly and 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 Pastor Hibanji uh, is going to commit themselves to join that second generation, committing themselves to this beautiful union? It is alive. It is well. It is going. And Pastor Holmes is right. The message that God has placed in my heart, working with Dr. Kim working with Dr. Jenkins, working with Archbishop Stallings, with the Edwards and others, and coming just Marie and I in our hearts, in alignment with Reverend Sun Young Moon and with Dr. Hachahan Moon. The essentiality of all the work of ACLC in the World Christian Leadership Conference is lost if our second gen are just treated as objects of our program. They are to become in the subject position of continuing to build God's kingdom, not just now for now, but for all of the generations to come. Let us continue to build strong within our minds, our hearts, and also that true love, that key element that Dr. Edwards spoke of tonight. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious, heavenly parent, God. Mm. Continue to fill us with the truth of thy word. Grant us wisdom, grant us understanding for the facing of these days and help us become what you've always desired for humanity to look like, for human beings to be with the great responsibility of having dominion over all of your creation. Tonight, we come to recommit ourselves 
to learning all that we need to know to share with others and cultivate that truly we may be the stewards you would have us to be. And we will take our responsibility of this creation to return it to your ideal. And we're going to do this because we understand now that the significance of marriage and family is not just about our human sensuality or our human seeking a pleasure. It is to please you. It is to please your heart that in doing so, we will be pleased because our love will be shared in a heavenly way. We pray against all abuse. We pray against all violent crimes. We pray against all existence of enemies because we know you desire for us to be brothers and sisters here. So help us across all of the barriers of existence to come into harmony and unity with what you desire for all humankind. Thank you for Dr. Edwards tonight and for all who have listened. Thank you for the leader who has touched all of us who are on this call and join us for Chosen and Dr. Kihu Kim. Bless his family. Bless his reach throughout the world. Bless his efforts in bringing back to a reality. Peace on earth. Peace in Korea. Peace in America. Peace in our home. We pray this. And all of the names that have ever been spoken towards you, for you are the same existing parent of us all, no matter how we call it. But also, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the powerful name of Jesus Christ in which we pray, for true parents, and the powerful way in which they've led us to appreciate that we are central to you too. So hear us in our own names, Luan and Marie Rouse, amen and adieu. Now let us go to Reverend Hernandez, who will lead us in your question. Reverend Hernandez. Good evening, everyone, brothers and sisters. Good evening, Dr. Kihun Kim. Thank you for your leadership of ACLC for so many years and now uh, being the chairman and leader of the steering committee of the World Christian Leadership Conference to our co-chair, Dr. Rouse, to our presenter tonight, Dr. Tanya Edwards. Thank you so much. Um, actually, when we look in the chat tonight, there are just praises for what you gave your presentation. Uh, there are no questions tonight uh, that I've encountered. Um, tonight, as you were presenting, I was just thanking God that we live in a time, first of all, I'm so grateful to the Holy Spirit that guides us and leads us and tells us to be patient when we don't understand everything, right? And I'm thankful for um, <clears throat> that kind of enduring uh, humility before the Holy Spirit until we could live at a time when we could, like the scales could fall off our eyes. And we could see, of course, of course, it makes sense now, you know, that complete salvation is the salvation of the couple. That's what was lost in the garden. What was lost in the garden was two, not one. Or the two that should have become one in the image of the father, in the image of the heavenly parent. But instead, you know, and we, we thank God, we thank God for sending Jesus and we thank Jesus for his willingness to go on our behalf to bear our sin so that we could have personal, individual salvation. But as you were saying, Dr. Rouse, we can see now clearly that the ultimate next step is taking, you know, uh, a saved man and a saved woman and them under God's anointing and God's permission through the marriage blessing, them entering into a whole realm that Adam and Eve unfortunately failed to enter 
failed to enter. And um, the regret has been mankind's ever since. But we didn't know what we were, we didn't like, we couldn't see what was the cause of the cancer. Or we couldn't see what was the cause of this really dreadful curse or illness that we had, disease that we had. And it took really the Holy Spirit, you know, through the anointing that Jesus put upon Father Moon and Mother Moon to reveal to us what was really at the core. And so your explanation of what was God's ideal and how an ideal marriage unfolds and how we grow into maturity, um, that explanation of maturity and that perfection is really the maturity of heart. Um, another thing that's been hitting me when I, uh, the more and more I, I've been in this role and, and been working with clergy across America is that really from front, you know, from front to, you know, to the closing of the Bible, from front to back, it's all about the father's love, the parent's love for his children. Even if we were to really break down creation in Genesis, all the creation work that God invested himself in so much so that he needs to rest is for the sake of this first son and daughter, because through them will become all of God's progeny. All of God's progeny will come through them. And yet, yes, as we know, God immediately took up the course of restoration. And we know that we can see now through the Bible and through our eyes being open that um, even though God is almighty, God has to work within, with humans who can receive his direction and his inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So uh, it took God a long time to prepare a chosen people. And as you were saying, Reverend Dr. Rouse, it's uh, to that Abrahamic people, to Abraham, he did give a certain mission, and that mission was to bless all families of the world. And that could only be done when those chosen people could receive the Christ, receive Jesus, and allow him to carry out that work. Uh, that work was postponed until our time, and now we can see clearly that this is the, the, the final step, the final step of reading our world from, of Satan and bringing the family under God's covering. Yeah, so thank you so much, Dr. Edwards. We uh, are so grateful that you'll be with us next week and the week to come. Thank you. Wow. Well, any, any closing comments, Dr. Edwards, since you are the presenter of the day? You know, and, and I've heard this lecture so many times, and every time that I hear it or see it, I get new insight. I get a new assurance or reassurance that what God is talking about and Father Moon, uh, the kingdom of God, it, it's just amazing. And it makes, it empowers me to know that I can truly walk with God and feel that I am the kingdom of God and in my family. And I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Dr. Mark. Thank you. You know, uh, Dr. Edwards, um, your third week with us, you and I will actually do a dialogue together on, on all of this. And that's going to be a great time. So oh. wouldn't it be great next week? And he's right here. Let's ask him if he might do it. If Dr. Kim, We'll give our guest commentary. We'll follow your le your lecture and give the commentary. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, Dr. Kim? Yes, How I, about I can that? give a very tough questions. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but today I'm ho hold off, hold off until a last lecture. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> then we'll bring Dr. Kim for uh, the last lecture and we'll, be, we'll all be together. That's going to be powerful. But we're glad to have you, Dr. Kim, and we look forward you. to you being with us next week. <laughs> mm -hmm.
God bless. Thank you, Reverend Hernandez. Thank you so much, everyone. And, uh, you know, I really believe that Jesus, you know, in his time, you know, he really wanted to even break down if two or more are gathered in my name. I really believe that is the, a blessed couple. That is a blessed couple and their children and their family and their community. Uh, and uh, I've been experience it, experiencing it uh, with my wife that, you know, when we pray together and uh, someone was sharing a, a statistic recently. I don't you know how reliable it is, but it was like a very small percentage of Christian couples actually spend time praying together. And uh, it, it would behoove us to spend that time to grow our hearts together, centered on God, uh, especially on the blessing. Well, God, God bless everyone for tuning hey, in hey, tonight. Hey, we, we, you haven't said that, Reverend Hernandez. Guess what? I'm going to be talking to Marie Moore. We spent time together today because I preached, was working for ACLC over the weekend and, and closed that meeting out yesterday. Yesterday was 10 10 for us. Oh, that was right. our 11 10 10 10. Uh, anniversary of being a blessed couple. <laughs> we and we've enjoyed the day together, and we're going to talk some more right now. Oh, Thank that's God. wonderful! Happy 11th anniversary! Yes. Thank Happy you. Thank blessing you. anniversary! Wow! And to anyone else Dr. who shares Dr. that, Dr. Rouse, don't talk anymore. Just to take her to a nice restaurant. <laughs> 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 All right, Dr. Kim. Food is love. I got it. <laughs> God bless you, Happy everyone. Thank you for tuning in from coast to coast. Again, thank you to our presenter, Dr. Tanya Edwards, to special remarks from Dr. Kihun Kim, for our chair, Dr. Luan Rouse, and for our wonderful administrator, Minister Young Soon Quinn, and also remarks from Minister Joshua Holmes on YCLC. Good night, everybody. God bless you all. Thank you so much Bye. for being part of Chosen and for being chosen. Bye. Good night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless God bless Pakistan. God bless you. God bless you. bless you. God 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 bless you.